Greetings and salutations. My name is James Dean. Nah, just jiving. The guy in the box is James Dean. I figured you didn't need to see my mug, and I'm feeling a bit boxed in right now. My name is Gerard Barbeau. I was asked by the folks at Printed Matter to speak about mail art and my involvement with it. Mail art's known as postal art, a.k.a. correspondence art. But before I begin the blah, 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 as my dad used to say, I realize this may seem trivial to some of you out there, and part of me agrees. A global pandemic supersedes just about everything else. So I want to give a big shout out to all those helping us in our time of need, despite the dangers to themselves. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you for your perseverance and patience. Thank you for your sacrifices. Thank you for your compassion and empathy. Big thanks to all those that volunteer. Thank you all for your service. Okay, here we go. Forward into the past. It's now 1984 BC. That's before computers, before cell phones. Time when people wrote letters and sent postcards to each other. Time when postal services let you mail just about anything. All the twine, coconut, a chair, etc. As long as you affixed the correct postage, it was good to go. In any event, I went to the Franklin Furnace Gallery in New York City to see an exhibition of mail art. Wow, amazing. I was not alone. There were others making postcard collages, illustrating envelopes, creating their own stamps and cancellations. I had done some of that traveling around and corresponding with friends and families. I was aware of pen pals, strangers writing to each other, learning from one another, becoming friends over time via the mail. But here, in this gallery, I discovered a worldwide network of like-minded souls. Well, not always. Some kindred spirits, some not. All participating in what appeared to be a non-commercialized, non-centralized, small d, democratic community where they created performances, exhibitions, publications, and more often than not documented those events, listing participants' names and addresses. As a sidebar, <clears throat> that controversial show became a flashpoint in the mail art world, seeking to define itself. It was a pivotal moment for me. I got as many names and addresses as I could and started sending collage postcards with notes. Some people responded, some did not. Some sent fine art, some sent lint. Everything from A to Z. Some documentation were beautiful catalogs, some were handwritten lists. Some shows were hung in a tree, some were held in museums. An incredible range of diverse forms of self-expression. Photographs, audio cassettes, rubber stamping, Xerox and collage, and any other imaginable and unimaginable ways to communicate. In order to voice their thoughts, dreams, feelings, fantasies, hopes, and desires. Networking, not for a job, but for an opportunity to reach out and share something of themselves. Not all were artists, some were little kids, some old folks, all from different walks of life, both individuals and families. Another sidebar here, and a joyful memory. Both my mom, Claudine, and my dad, Felma, may they rest in peace, joined in this activity. Both created their own networks. We often participated in the same projects and corresponded with some of the same people. We even organized a mail art exhibition in New York City Gallery in the late 80s or early 90s. I can't remember now. Yeah. Within a few years, I had attended mail art gatherings and congresses in the U.S., Germany, and Japan. Was visiting and was visited by many mail art friends. And now I had a mail art tag, a handle, an alias, a nom de plume. 
my pseudonym is Regard Bobard, Regard Bobart. It's an anagram of my birth name. I added 166 not because I lived on 166th Street, but because I had found two rubber stamps with that number on them on two different occasions. I think now it's also important to state that mail art was not just a fun or funny thing. Some folks I corresponded with lived in oppressive, repressive regimes, some in ruthless dictatorships. We joked here that the Stasi, the East German secret police, had one of the best confiscated mail art archives. It wasn't a joke for those who were incarcerated and punished for trying to suggest change and expressing themselves in a manner deemed unacceptable by those in charge. All this to say that mail art is a unique form of communication. It could be profound or frivolous political or personal or both. It can be egotistical or timid. It's a macro microcosm of the human condition. It's the sound of one hand clapping for some or noise for others. It is what you make it. There's other forms of expression that share space with mail art where folks travel from one world to another Things like artist stamps and local posts, rubber stamps, concrete poetry, or artist books. I leave you to discover them for yourself. Do some research. Knowledge is power. There are several authors and editors who have published books and articles about mail art, past, present, and future. Many can be found in printed manner. They will be more informative and detailed than I have been. Also look to art movements like Futurism, Dada, Constructivism, Fluxus, and Nouveau Realism. They laid down a foundation that mail art built on. Lastly, mail art is a misnomer. I've had the pleasure to discuss that with one of the more influential instigators, promoters, players, and practitioners of mail art. Ray Johnson and I met, talked, and exchanged stuff in the mail a few times. We agreed, it ain't always art. It is an action, an activity. It's a process, not just a product of imagination. For what it's worth, the large bulk of my participation was from 1984 to 94 or thereabouts. I still correspond dance with a few old mail art friends. I don't know the current virtual electronic version of it. I'm old school. There's a certain delight in going to my mailbox and seeing something other than a bill or an advertisement. Maybe one day you will experience it. Here's to that possibility. Well, I hope this provided you with some small sense of normalcy in, these, in, in this insanity we're in. And if nothing else, it gave you a bit of distraction. Be good or be gone, like the sign of McSally said. Be safe, protect yourselves and others. Wishing you all much love, peace, and understanding. Adieu.